Eugene, a three-peat is uh, fantastic anywhere, but to have it at home it must have been something extra special. No, yeah, I mean the event was, we've had three on the card before, but this was a special event for us, obviously, because uh, it's literally next door, you know, to the gym, a kilometre down the road from the gym, so our, our, um, our home turf is very important to us. And something else that would be important was the amount of people that turned out, the biggest uh, um, audience at the uh, sporting event in, at Spark, um, full up, and they were all there for the Kiwi boys. Yeah, I mean, pretty much a sellout, uh, bar, bar a few seats, but, um, and, and what a great crowd, like, they were vocal, they were loud. There was some um, chanting going on that was real, typically Kiwi chanting, <laughs> you don't really hear um, some of that profanity around the, uh, in other parts of the world, but, um, yeah, it was, all in, it was all in good spirit, and they, I mean, with all that's been going on um, lately, um, sometimes you're never really sure what the response is at home, even though we're right here, but um, obviously people are like following us and getting behind the sport and uh, yeah, really joining in all this uh, bit of history that's being made at the moment. Well, we start off and you had to ha have an early start because the night before there was Eternal Show and you had uh, six fighters on that. and home and then straight up in the morning and what time did you have to get to work? Uh, I mean I'm about to yawn right now to me. <laughs> but, yeah, I'm running on about uh, six or seven hours sleep over, over the whole weekend so um, yeah I'm pretty fatigued but I got a lot of you know I'm, I'm only starting to feel sleepy now because the adrenaline's a hell of a thing right? The adrenaline like pumped me, pumped me up and got me through the whole weekend basically. But no, it was a big, big couple of nights. I had the guys on Eternal. I had six guys on Eternal. Uh, and they, they, they all won, but then one guy wasn't a four man and he lost the final. So, um, yeah, that was a fantastic way to uh, start that weekend for those guys having really good results. And then, and then we rolled into Sunday after that. So, yeah, early, early Sundays. Kai won us at the stadium at uh, 7.30 a.m on Sunday morning. And Kai's fight, can you run us through that? Because uh, it was it was a tough fight, he was a dangerous opponent. Yeah, and uh, I, I said in our previous statements that what Kai needed to do, Kai was right on the edge of having a great performance. Like he just needed to tweak a couple of things and then he could easily turn that fight that he lost around. It wasn't like we needed to, um, you know, go from black black to white. We didn't have to change anything completely. We just needed to tweak and refine a couple of things. And then I knew Kai could have the performance that he that he had. Um, it was just making the right adjustments. Kai was right there in that last fight, but there's just a couple of things that he didn't pick up. And I knew with the extra time we had between the last fight and this one, that, that would just give us that vital time that we needed to, like, just just reassure and, and prop up a couple of the things he needed to do. And sure enough, that, that time that we had, we used well, and then he was able to give the performance. Kind of like that we were really looking for in the last fight, when you're coming up against a guy who's really aggressive and a big power puncher. And where, where will he move on from, from there? Um, to a ranked opponent, yeah. I mean, the guy, I mean, Tyson Nam, is a guy that's uh, a lot more experienced than a lot of the ranked flyweights. Um, he's fought a lot of uh, top level competition outside of the UFC, but now Kai will move into um, to a ranked opponent, uh, someone above him, whoever we can get. Did he come through the fight all right? Is he ready to fight straight away? Or he, came through, he came through the fight great, like and no injuries, nothing. The after party, he didn't come through too well. I'm sure he's got a headache, so that's a different story. Yeah. And then, of course, we move on to Brad. Who was taking a big, well, a lot of people said a risk because that was a step up. Yeah, I mean, a, a step up in terms of the, the guy's UFC experience and stuff. Um, and, 
he, he's fought uh, another top contender, this guy, and uh, the, the other top contender did beat him, but it was still a good, it was a good benchmark to see if uh, Brad can kind of like, uh, in some sort of way, match up against those top contenders, because this guy has fought a top contender being um, Kevin Lee, so um, yeah, Brad did a great job. Um, yeah, it was, he, he followed the game plan for like, yeah, 60% of the fight and the other 40 he used his instincts and stuff and yeah, so we, we got the job done. I thought um, he got a bit hard done by getting a split. 41 pretty comfortable but um, that's a judge's score so as long as we won I'm happy. Yeah, the fight changed a couple of times on the way through. Yeah, th th I mean the, 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 the the opponent is just primarily a stand-up guy, so um, uh, he was never going to be uh, better than Brad in that department. So he, uh, and, and great decision, he changed to uh, more of a closing the distance in wrestling. So it was good. I mean, it was. it's always going to be controversial because you've got a guy uh, wrestling and closing the distance and holding you but not doing anything. And it can be very hard to free yourself from that guy. So um, it's a controversial uh, uh, area in MMA. It's like you've got someone who's extremely hard to get off you, but isn't doing anything but holding you and stalling. And then you've got the other person who's trying their best to get out, but they just can't. And they've got offense. They're giving as much offense as they can. So it's just one of those things like, it, it, you you have to play to the judges. Like every judge is different. Uh, there's a judging criteria, but every judge has their own kind of things that they like to see. So they ended up being a split. But uh, we were on the right side of the ledger, so we we got nothing to complain about. We're talking about um, trying to influence judges and that. I um, it was pointed out to me that you were having a word with in between rounds with the ref. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, Richard referee, what's the referee's name? John Sharp. John Sharp, yeah, my mate John Sharp. Um, we get back a little bit, but yeah, he's too experienced to fall for any of my tricks. But obviously I was, I, I mean, I was just having a word in the ref's ear, just saying, look, he's, he's not doing anything with that position. You're letting it go too long. How about you give us a bit of, you know, give us a bit of leeway here, like, um, and, and just getting in his ear a bit. Just, you know, that's my job. Like, uh, my job is to, give my guys every advantage I can so you know I, I mean I was even yelling at you know I, I even during that fight I, I would yell out as loud as I could like the judges can see he's doing nothing don't worry about it Brad the judges can see that there's nothing happening here you know those those judges are an earshot of me they know they can hear me so if, you know if anything can go into their subconscious or conscience from me that helps uh, influence and get an advantage from my guy then I'll try, yeah, I'll try everything. Yeah. Well, Brad, he obviously came through good this morning because I arrived here at five o'clock and he was here and he said that <coughs> you were there before, here this morning before him. So um, he, he's fitting well. Um, if any idea when he'll be ready to fight again? I'm guessing Brad will ask for a fight uh, maybe tomorrow. <laughs> uh, he'll, he'll ask, yeah, he'll want to get get on and move with it uh, after he's gotten over it, eating a little bit more than he usually does. But he's fit to go, he's good to go. He's got no injuries at all, so he, he'll probably look to um, get on a, get on some sort of card as fast as he can. He told me that in an interview I just did before okay. that uh, he's going to stand back from that and leave it all up to you. Okay. And um, so I'm asking you, <laughs> have yes. you got any... any uh, I can yeah. fight. He can fight in 2021 then. Because <laughs> sometimes he caused me a bit of a headache in that fight, didn't he? <laughs> so I'll get over that headache and I'll see him in January 2021. <laughs> Thanks for that, Brad. Leave that up to me. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we move on to the big one. And yeah, um, yeah. as tough as you expected it to be? Uh, and more. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I saw Paul. Last night at the hospital, and uh, with Dent, they were in the same hospital. Both boys were severely banged up. I chatted to Paul and I said, look, mate, you guys fight 10 times. 
it's going to be a split every time. And it's going to go both ways every time. Because they're just that closely matched. You got two guys, super talented guys, two very tough guys, two very durable guys, two very similar skill sets. Um, yeah, just uh, that's what I expected. I, I expected uh, for us to have a superior strategy, but I also expected there would be times when, uh, just knowing the nature of Paul, there would, Dan would have to like show a bit of grit and Paul would equally have to show a bit of grit back. I expected that in this fight, so um, it was just, and, and uh, Dan's heart and grit is unquestionable, and Paul's as well, so that's why he got such a great fight. Yeah, he, he had to call on everything, didn't he, yeah, Dan? Because at, at the start, he looked like the left hand and his distance was perfect, and then he got caught a couple of times, and. Um, after the, I've already asked you this, just but for the viewers, um, when he was speaking, I, I was wor worried that his jaw was broken, but you said he's got the all clear. You know, I was up at the hospital last night, he came out of the hospital last night, uh, no broken ankle, no broken face, he's just, uh, just the bumps and bruises, the uh, badges of honour that you get from a good, good scrap, so. And he's, what about Paul, is he okay as well? Oh, I'm not sure. Um, of the extent of his injuries, but he was pretty banged up. I mean, both guys were banged up, but I think they're, quite, they're reasonably healthy. It's healthy as you can be after a war like that. Now, it'd be too early to try and put a time on when Dan fights, but before the fight, you said this would, if he won it, it would catapult him up to maybe uh, pretty close to a title. Yeah, like I said, like he's in a position now where you know, like if circumstances allow, there's a couple of injuries there, pull out here, he could be fighting for the title. You know, that's, it's happened before. Um, but now he gets to fight, you know, you know, he's possibly one, two fights away from a title shot. So now it gets really interesting. Now, that, now, like, you finish one fight and then you jump into the pressure of another big fight. So uh, there's guys out there, uh, he caught someone out last night. Um, I can't remember who it was. Oh, Gaethje. And uh, Porio's there, who probably needs a match. So these are the these are top five guys. These are guys that uh, Porio's held the interim title. Like, he's right in the mix. Uh, where he, he's, he can feel the shine coming off the belt. He can feel it on his face. So it's very alluring. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm going to let you go and uh, get a bit of shut eye maybe, <laughs> but I know you've got other things to do, but um, maybe one word for the fans that turned out for you? Absolutely, um, yeah, one of the best, it's probably the best crowd I've ever been in front of, the atmosphere was electric, um, we're always stuck in the gym so we're never really sure just how much support we're garnering, but um, from all the people that were there at the stadium, thank you. From all the people that watched throughout the country, thank you for supporting us. And uh, yeah, uh, please get behind us. Like, we do this for you, we do this for our country. It's something we're very proud of. We're proud to represent you, and we want to do as best a best job as we can at representing you guys. So, thank you very much to all our fans and supporters. Cheers, mate. Hey, there was one other thing. Um, somebody said that there was late pullouts, and you said that you had some names to, that you could have put forward? Yeah, I mean, uh, there was there was a guy that, there was a welterweight that missed weight. And then uh, as soon as I heard that, of course, I sent uh, Mr. Sean Shelby the five or six different names. I said, I got guys that, this was only two or three hours before the sauna. I said, uh, I messaged him and said, look, look through this list. Tell me who you want. These guys will be in the sauna like within 15 minutes. You just let me know, and we'll make the wait, and we'll show up, and we'll perform. Um, in the end, uh, all my guys were panicking, <laughs> but they would have they would have made the wait. But in the end, um, uh, that fight, that opponent's going to be moved to another card in a couple of weeks. So they, yeah, yeah. But I mean, uh, uh, Sean Shelby was at the Eternal Show. 
and he was uh, very impressed with a lot, a lot of the guys that, that fought uh, that night and uh, he, he let me know who they were. I'm not going to let, uh, I won't let the people know who they are yet, but um, yeah, he, he's definitely keeping an eye on a couple of the guys that fought on Eternal. Um, but what so you're saying is there's more fighters ready to be on the UFC from New Zealand and, there, and the UFC is aware of it. Uh, 100%. 100%. They're keeping a close eye on us. Cool, mate. Yeah. Cheers. Cool. Thanks, Tony. Brilliant. <laughs>